So the figure that we're looking at here is Hans Selye's general adaptation syndrome. Now the general adaptation syndrome, before we look at the figure, wasn't necessarily developed for powerlifting or for strength training, but really for anything. So let's go through the figure and then let's relate it to lifting, but also let's relate it to life so we can see exactly how this works. So if we start in the bottom left of the figure and the general adaptation syndrome, and remember names are very descriptive. So this is a general way to adapt to something or to a new stress. So we have progressive overload. If we can see overload, that shows us after we have that horizontal blue line, when that line goes down, that's in response to overload. If you do something new, right, you go into the gym for the first time and you do the training, as we talked about earlier in this module, if you do that, you see that line go down and now you're in the alarm reaction stage. That alarm reaction stage is your body's alarm to a new stimulus. That's fatigue, that's muscle damage, right? Now, you can see that line going up and you know, underneath that line is the stage of resistance. Whatever you're training for, you're now getting the benefits. Endurance, neuro, muscle growth. So you have the initial overload. After you have the initial overload, you're fatigued. Then you recover and you're in the stage of resistance, meaning you can handle more training. You've adapted to it. Ultimately, though, you reach a plateau. Now, this plateau is the stage of exhaustion. That's overreaching, right? If you overreach, you can see in the orange line, your adaptations start to decrease a little bit. But if you rebound, meaning you taper, you decrease your volume, you can super compensate or peak for competition and then really get closer to where you need to be. However, if you don't taper and you continually go on, that's when you can overtrain, which is much more severe than overreaching, which we'll get to later. So this is our general adaptation syndrome. We want to talk about this in two ways. We're going to talk about it in a very general sense for something in life, for example. Then I want to relate it back to something we talked about in unit two called the repeated bout effect. So for something in life, let's say we think about somebody that stays up really late at night and then wakes up later in the day. So somebody that stays up to let's say 2 a.m. and then they wake up every day at around 10 a.m. Well, if you tell this person that they need to get up the next day at 5 a.m. to get to work, well, they're only gonna sleep three hours, right? 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. Well, at first, their body's gonna do what? It's gonna be in an alarm reaction stage. They're gonna wake up that first day, they're gonna be wiping crust out of their eyes all day, they're super tired, uh, they can't do anything because they only slept three hours. So that's the alarm reaction stage. However, what's going to happen? Gradually, they're going to adapt and they're going to go to sleep earlier and they're going to go to sleep earlier and earlier to whereas then they can start waking up at 5 a.m. and they've made that adaptation. So they've gone through the stage of resistance, right? So you're going to adapt to that. In terms of a lifting sense, it's like the repeated bout effect that we talked about. When you go into the gym the first time and you overload, you go in the alarm reaction stage. That's muscle damage. But if you train again the next week, remember in the figure that we looked at, repeat about effect was high, but when we did a muscle specific exercise the following week, soreness or damage decreased. That's what's happening here in the stage of resistance. It's damage decreases and then you can handle more training. That's the general adaptation syndrome. And as we can see in the box here, this means to be able to achieve this though, to be able to avoid that overtraining and that long-term plateau, you need program variation in volume and intensity. Those are the foundations of a periodized program. That's not talking about types or anything of that nature. It's just saying program variation, a logical allocation of volume over time, a logical allocation of intensity. So you're not doing the same thing, so you're not constantly overreaching, is going to allow you to progress in the long term.